Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties, and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. Hello and welcome to My Hometown. I'm Bill Loran, along with my co-host, Nassau Community College student, Stacy Rain. And today you're going to learn about a nonprofit foundation here in Nassau County that is committed to spreading awareness of a disease called neurofibromatosis, or NF a common genetic disorder that causes the growth of tumors on nerve pathways anywhere in the body. Our guest today is Kate Durge. She is the Chief Executive Officer of Penny's Flight Foundation, named after a daughter, Penny, who passed away after fighting NF in November 2022 at the age of 16. Kate, welcome to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Thank you both so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. Let's start off with learning a little bit. And of course, first, we want you to know how sorry we are to hear about this, but would like you to tell us about the foundation and tell us about Penny. Oh, thank you so much. Well, truly, it's an honor to be here, as I said. And well, where to begin with Penny? She was the brightest light with the biggest heart. And um, she did pass last year at the age of 16, but uh, she led the most beautiful, full life. And, and we say truly she lived more in her 16 years than most people do when they live to 100. Uh, she lived it with bravery, positivity, and beauty. And um, I guess to start, when Penny was four months old, she rolled off our bed and she fractured her tibia bone. So we raced to the pediatrician. And at that point, the pediatrician took one look at her leg and said, you know what, get up to hospital for special surgery. And we were living in New York City at the time. So we raced up and the orthopedic surgeon at the time looked at her fractured tibia and said, you know what, this is more than a fracture. It looks like something called congenial pseudarthrosis, which one out of 300,000 kids have it. So we sort of looked at each other. We were like, oh my gosh, what? And he said, and not only that, but I think think this is under the umbrella of something we call neurofibromatosis or NF. He said, but don't Google it because you're going to be horrified. Let's just focus on her leg. So it was at that time that we decided to make a choice that we were going to just make sure Penny lived the biggest and most beautiful life. So um, we focused on her leg and I'm just going to dive right into it. But she had seven surgeries over the course of her um, 16 years on her leg. She wore a brace every day to protect her tibia bone, but she ice skated and she danced and she did um, everything she wanted to do uh, because we just told her that's what you do. You can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and she was never defined by the brace on her leg. Now, that initial time, there was the way you said something, I just want to clarify for me. Uh, did the doctor tell you there was a limited lifespan or anything like that? No, 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 no. We, um, because we didn't focus on that, truly. Mm -hmm. When they had said she has this congenital pseudarthrosis, which is the bowing of a tibia bone, um, and it might be under this umbrella of NF, neurofibromatosis, because at that point, we were only focusing on her leg, and we were not focusing on the NF diagnosis. We did, in fact, get her tested shortly after her four months. It was probably around the 10-month mark, and she tested positive for NF. But if you go on the website, website and you Google neurofibromatosis, you are blown away with these images and the possibilities. And um, NF is the most common genetic condition in the United States. One out of 2,000 kids are diagnosed. However, it's the most unknown and underfunded because you can have a multitude of symptoms ranging from, as you mentioned, tumors all over your body or tumors on your optic nerves that cause you to go blind, or you don't have any symptoms. For Penny, she had these cafe au lait spots, which are similar to just freckles on her torso, on her uh, neck, but we sort of reference them as beauty spots or beauty marks. Um, and then she had this bowed tibia bone. We never focused on the NF diagnosis because we didn't need to. And we there was no there was no point in thinking about what could be. It was we're living in the moment. We're going to make sure she just lives every day with beauty and positivity and she did. So it wasn't until 2020, actually, in the fall that, um, you know, all these kids are coming out of COVID and or, or through COVID, they've spent so much time online for mm -hmm. school. And so Penny developed a little bit of a wandering eye or sort of a 
tweak of the eye where we took her to the ophthalmologist and they took one look at her and they said, you know what, let's send her in for an MRI. Some kids have this because they've spent so much time focusing in on the screen that their eye muscles become a little weakened. Mm -hmm. But let's send her for an MRI. So we went and we got the MRI in the fall of 2020. That was when we found out she had her first brain tumor. Similarly to the way we handled the her whole life to that point, we said, okay, this is what we got to do. We're going to go in and we went right to the emergency room um, at NYU. An incredible surgeon by the name of Dr. David Harder took her in. He removed the tumor, which was benign at the time. And it wasn't until spring 21 that Penny developed the next tumor, same location, and that's when it we discovered that it was malignant, and she had neuro, um, she had this brain tumor. It, that was the beginning. But with each stage, we chose positivity and joy, and we didn't let any of this impact Penny's life. So even knowing she had a glioblastoma, to your question, Bill, you know, we never thought of it as a terminal disease. It was just, okay, she's got a tumor. We're going to go in, we're going to get it removed, and then we're going to go river rafting in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably the right way to do things and Us, the best outcome. You know, I think what I have said many times before is we've led a very blessed life. You know, my I have a beautiful family, wonderful, wonderful friends, an incredible community. And this goes back to sort of my own upbringing with parents who were incredibly supportive and positive. Mm -hmm. And so the night before my husband and I got married, my father, who was very faithful, and he pulled us aside and he said, you all have lived the most charmed life. You have beautiful friends and you have a beautiful family, but you will be tested. And it's up to you how you decide to play the cards you're dealt in life. And my husband, Chad, and I looked at each other and we're like, he's really sort of like crushing our vibe here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going into this beautiful wedding weekend. Yeah. and But it was that advice that stuck with us. And from that day one, when Penny was four months old and we got that first diagnosis, it was a choice. And we chose joy and positivity. And I think because of that, Penny did too. And that's how she lived her life. What that's an inspiration great. you are. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, wow. I mean, I just, I feel like Getting some news like that could send someone, you know, under the covers for I, you know, the next yeah. three months. But you just said, OK, let's this is what we have and let's the know, move forward. Yeah. Because the, the alternative alternative is too bleak. Yeah. You know, what does that do to you to kind of put your head under the covers and hide from it? It's it's make the most out of every day. Live life to the fullest. So mm -hmm. with each diagnosis or with each, you know, hurdle we we had to go over, we were like, we're going to do this and we're going to be positive about it because the outcome is so much better when you choose joy versus mm -hmm. poor me, woe is me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do anything for you in that sense. And it's so true. And I think all of us can learn just from that statement alone. Right. So many lessons. Truly, oh. truly. I'm, yeah, truly. Well, so is, it, is that a common, the way, um, the course that Penny took, it, it, or the course that this took for Penny, is that common for most kids who are diagnosed with this? Or what for with was? NF? No, yeah. um, every case is different. Okay, and that is what we have learned through all of this. Um, and again, because we didn't focus on NF, it wasn't really until Penny passed away that we recognized that we had an opportunity mm -hmm. to, through Penny's beautiful story, to raise awareness around. The life she led in choosing positivity and joy in terms of everything she went through. You know, we have um, a saying with the foundation, which is, you know, finding positivity in the face of challenge, um, beauty and imperfection, and having faith over fear. And that was such a, a lesson we learned from Penny's life that um, we recognized we had this opportunity to be able to share her story. Mm -hmm. And, and help other NF families. And I think, back to your question about, is this the normal path? There is no normal path for NF families and NF patients. 
everyone is different. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's been such a challenge to raise awareness and focus on NF because everyone's feeling this and living this in a different way. So Mm -hmm. some patients, because they have an optic tumor, they end up going blind. You know, others have cognitive issues. Um, Others develop a brain tumor. For Penny's case, it was rare for her to develop this glioblastoma, or it's rare to have a glioblastoma sort of under this NF umbrella. Okay. Um, So... You started to talk about Penny's Flight Foundation. I would love to learn more about what you all do um, and the impact that you're making. Well, thank you. Um, Again, I feel like Penny lived her life's purpose and we're living our life's purpose to be able to help others and make an impact. And um, in the last week of Penny's life, because she had led such a beautiful life and we never even talked about NF, it wasn't because... We shied away from it, but it was because she wasn't defined by it, that it was such a surprise to so many of our community members and family and friends that this glioblastoma had Mm -hmm. spread as quickly as it did. And it really was within a week's period of time. So during that week, we opened our home and um, we played music and we had light and love and all of our friends and family coming in to visit Penny. Mm -hmm. Um, Because again, we chose that joy and positivity and we wanted her to feel that love surrounding her. And friends have said it was like a love cocoon and that she went off on a love (laughs) rocket ship um, because she did. And so having our friends and family around um, and they saw we were choosing positivity and joy and to celebrate her life when Penny passed, we did that with her celebration and we decided we no one was going to wear black. Everyone's mm-hmm. going to wear color. We were going to play music and girls were going to do TikTok dances and people were going to sing. So we had over 1,100 people show up wow. for this celebration. And I think both Chad and I recognized at that time that, again, we had an opportunity, you know, with such the impact that Penny made on so many lives. Um, her celebration was on a Friday. We woke up on that Monday and we're like, we got to do this. We have to launch a foundation, not only to spread Penny's beautiful message of positivity and joy, but we got to find a cure for NF. Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah, so it was at that time, it was just days after her life celebration that we knew we had an opportunity and, and we needed to do this. And it wasn't just for her glioblastoma or it wasn't just for her bowed tibia bone, her congenital pseudoarthrosis. But because both of those were under the umbrella of NF, we really wanted to get to the top of the funnel mm-hmm. and and go find a cure. You are listening to My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Stacey Rain here with Bill Horan. And today our guest is Kate Durge, the Chief Executive Officer of Penny's Flight Foundation, named after her daughter Penny, who passed away fighting neurofibromatosis or NF, a common genetic disorder that causes growth of tumors on nerve pathways anywhere in the body. Kate, if I heard you correctly before, and this number has been resonating with me, you said one out of every 2,000, uh, kind of a popular disease, if, if I can use that expression, meaning uh, it's all around us. In, in an average town on Long Island, that would probably be 15 to 20 or 30 people probably have NF. Yeah. So I've never heard of it till today. And yet, and of course, you've made at least myself and maybe Stacy. I don't know if she knew of it before, aware of it. Once you started this foundation, what transpired after that? Did you run events? Was it a golf outing, a dance, a balloon fair? <laughs> Love the balloon fair. That's yeah. a great idea. It sounds good. <laughs> it does sound good. Um, you know, honestly, Bill, it just took off. It was one of those things that I say Penny lived her life's purpose. We're living our life's purpose because it was so organic in the way that it grew. And we're very fortunate in that Penny's girlfriends have all risen to the table with Penny's brothers and our community. And all of a sudden, everyone wanted to do and be and get involved in this. And so when we decided to launch Penny's Flight Foundation, um, all these kids came to the table and they said, we want to do positively Penny (laughs) pop-ups. And so literally the day we launched, we had 50 pop-ups 
around the country of friends of Penny's who are at boarding schools and local who said, we want to do a pop-up and we want to raise awareness and um, we want to launch this. And, and I give so much credit and truly so much to these kids because through these events that they hosted right out of the gate to their social media and spreading this out, all of a sudden it was everywhere. You know, they were showing these butterfly hand signals to represent Penny's flight. Mm -hmm. We had created the logo. We had created the tagline, spread your wings, shine your light. And these kids did it. And so within a week's time, we had Jimmy Fallon, who lives here in Long Island, uh, at one of our events. We had Eli Manning being photographed at another event. We ha- were raising thousands of dollars because of these kids. Mm. So that's how it started. And then we have very generous, um, wonderful friends in the media, you know, Nora O'Donnell brought us on CBS News Mm -hmm. a week after we had launched to tell our story because she was a good family friend and she never knew what Penny was going through. So I think she, among so many others, couldn't believe that through everything, the chemo, radiation, braces she wore, you know, all of this, Penny never once complained. She always was smiling. She always was leading with positivity. So I think everyone recognized there's such an opportunity to help others in so many ways. Stacey, you know, we always hear the term, you can make a difference. Boy, did you, obviously, first we have to give you credit because you're not going to give it to yourself, but to you and your husband (laughs) for doing this. And to Penny herself, to be that person, I'm sure anybody would want to look back and say, I helped that person. I helped move that cure up eight years and saved X number of lives or made their life easier or longer or whatever. What a wonderful story. I mean, this is a real feel good right away. I I, I have no more complaints if I don't get the parking (laughs) space I want. But just knowing that there's people out there doing this, and I think it inspires us all to say, I could do something. I could help make things better. We just read about misery every day. Let's make things better. You know, that's exactly it. And we talk about the butterfly effect and how I love how our logo is a butterfly. You know, um, one of Penny's friends actually told me a butterfly represents an inextinguishable soul always drawn to the light. Mm. And I love that. And it's so penny because she was always drawn to the light. But we also talk about how the simplest act, like the flap of a butterfly's wing, can cause a revolution. (laughs) And that's what we're doing. And the simplest act from bake sales to the girls and all these boys. I mean, we've had so many events that have come about. We, um, you know, in addition to the pop-up for Penny, Positively Penny pop-ups. Um, there's been paintings for Penny. One of Penny's very good friends launched an uh, event in Greenwich, Connecticut, where she brought in a, a well-known artist. And all these kids came in for an art class, and it was in Penny's honor. And they talked about NF, and they talked about Penny's life. And they paid to come to this class, so 100% went back to the foundation. And then there was Pucks for Penny were another friend of Penny's, but her former boarding school, Pomfret School, launched this entire day of play for Penny. They made shirts for um, Penny Swipe Foundation at Pomfret. They launched a bake sale. They raised money. They had donations. And then there was another school, Taft School, where they did play for Penny again. And it was a lacrosse team, a varsity boys lacrosse team who wrote letters to their community, and they determined they were going to play for Penny on their last game of the season, which was aired by ESPN. And they all wore shorts, shirts, Penny's Fight Foundation. My mouth is just hanging open. I know. Saying <laughs> this, you know it, it goes on and on and on. And, and now these kids are launching Positively Penny clubs at colleges. So we have a friend down at UVA, and she's launched this club, and all these kids are getting on board. And so... For Parents Weekend, they're doing a Positively Penny pop-up, and they're spreading wings and shining their light. And it's it's you can't make this up. It's nothing that we could ever have crafted or 
forced to to pull together. I'm just thinking your branding attorney must be working overtime and saying, <laughs> just give me time. Play for penny, power for penny. Uh, <laughs> there must be, for penny. you know, pennies for penny, penny yeah. pickles, whatever you have. <laughs> there's something new, and but it works in. It, 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 it has a good sound to it. Yeah. And uh, But the branding attorney is probably filing every week. Let's lock this one in. Right. Let's lock that one in. Yeah. So. Well, that's the fun of it is that everyone's involved. In, and, you know, I think about our community and how our community, there's no playbook for how you lose a 16-year-old in your community, especially, you know, last minute or, or you know, when you're not expecting it, unexpected, right? Um, and how our community has risen up and just galvanized and come together as a community. You know, our local church, St. John's of Laddingtown, they're the ones who launched paintings for a penny and they brought in all of these kids and and not even just from the church but outside the community to do and be a part of this and they made pen, paintings to give back to Glen Cove Hospital for the patients at the hospital at at um, Christmas time and so it's just the ball keeps rolling and rolling and rolling uh, that's amazing thank you penny was just such a spark for so much she, good in the world which yeah. is what i mean you know, it's what our world needs right now. Is there's people spreading joy and love. Yeah. And so her, the name of the organization is Penny's Flight Foundation. So, Penny's Flight. and you've talked about you know t- taking flight. Can you can you talk yeah. a little bit more about the name? Yeah, that was the fun part of it. Again, you know, after Penny's life celebration that Monday following, we all sort of sat down as a family, friends, our community, and we knew we wanted to launch a foundation, but what was the name going to be? And um, and we always talk about Penny lived her life's purpose. So uh, that was going to be the initial go-to, Penny's purpose. Mm-hmm. And it was actually um, our oldest son, Henry, who's at University of Denver, and he's 19. And he was like, no, it's it's Penny's flight. And and all of a sudden we sort of looked at each other and we're like, yeah, that's that's it. It's Penny's flight. And and my background is marketing PR. So mm-hmm. when I talk about how I'm living my life's purpose, there's no coincidence that I've spent my life in launching brands right. and brand turnarounds and communicating and fundraising because I sit on the board of um, a number of foundations, but a hospital for special surgery, which mm-hmm. is where Penny was first diagnosed. Um, so we, the idea of Penny's flight had so much to it, just with the story of spread your wings and shining your light and, and butterflies. And we can talk about Penny's flight of her 16 years, but also Penny's flight of her future mm-hmm. and the impact she's making on this flight now. You know, Stacey, as we're talking to Kate, I'm watching her face and you are obviously doing what you were put on the earth to do. You're beaming, yeah. as you say this. You seem very happy in your work, which there's no greater reward for anybody you. than you can say that. Yeah. And you're helping people. I mean, whether you're helping them by marketing, raising money, the foundation, or you're a doctor, yeah. or you're a nurse, or a mathematician, you're doing something that's positively helping these people. And what a great uh, way to live your life and Thank go through you. every day. So. I've never felt more fulfilled in my I, life. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell as we sit here, we're just watching your face, and I'm sure Stacey sees it also. Thank you. Absolutely. How much does the foundation, has it raised so far? Or Well, that's the exciting news is um, we've raised over $3 million. I had a feeling you were going to come out and I was saying, don't say that bad word when you say holy blank. <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to say it, but... That's amazing. amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, we've only just begun. I, that's what's yeah. more amazing about yeah. it. That uh, I, I, I'm blown away by it. And that, but thank let's you. see because I, I know where her next question is going. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, you are listening to my hometown on the Voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. My name is Stacy Rain here with Bill Horan, and today our guest is Kate Durge, the Chief Executive Officer of Penny's Flight Foundation, named after her daughter Penny, who passed away fighting neurofibromatosis, or NF, a common genetic disorder that causes the growth of tumors on neural pathways anywhere in the body. So 
my next question is, I really want to get into the research and funding. And you talked about finding a cure. Yeah. So where are we on that? And tell me how this foundation is really moving the needle. Yeah, listen, we are so excited because back to your question in terms of it's great to have these events and raising awareness. And obviously, it's all about raising those critical funds to be able to put towards research and finding a cure. Um, and it's been a big learning curve for us. You know, we launched the foundation in December. And um, the initial sort of first quarter was raising awareness and doing these events. And back to your question, Bill, about how much we have raised, you know, our first annual big fundraiser, in addition to all these pop-up events, and we did a nationwide in-store shopping event with Veronica Beard. And Mm -hmm. I mean, that was incredible for awareness, but it really came down to our um, first annual family jamboree, which was held on June 29th. Ninth, which was Penny's birthday. And um, we had this idea that in our heads that we really wanted to do something beautiful. And it was my husband Chad's vision of bringing families and friends and our community together somewhat for a, a musical fest. And he grew up here in Long Island um, in um, in. Brook, old Brookville um, for the with the Boston Pops. And if anyone remembers, the Boston Pops used to come and perform. Um, and I think it was not at the Arboretum, but it was one of those venues outdoors where kids could run around and they would listen to music and adults would bring picnic blankets and sit down and kids had this freedom. So we modeled it, our first annual fundraiser off of that event. And so we brought bands in and we brought pop-up tents with arts and crafts and we brought in sponsors to support us and it was so beautiful it was just the most magical special evening and we raised 1.2 million dollars wow. <laughs> and so with that you know we were on a roll mm-hmm. and so this fall um, brings us to our our first grant making for projects mm-hmm. and we're thrilled because we have partnered with Cold Spring Harbor Labs who as we all know they've discovered DNA they are in our backyard mm-hmm. and they're going to be working with us on some really really special and exciting research projects. Kate tell us one what's coming up and if people are interested in getting involved help or contribute how can they join the parade? Well, Thank you so much. We would love it. And, you know, again, when we go to spread your wings, shine your light, the more we can do, the more we spread wings and shine light on on raising awareness and critical funds for neurofibromatosis. So coming up, if if anyone wants to follow us on on our website, it's www.penniesflight.org. And social media seems to be the place where we're growing on Instagram as well as TikTok. We have in-store shopping events coming up nationwide with Jay McLaughlin. We're doing something with Love Shack Fancy. We've got another event with Veronica Beard. Um also, one thing to mention, because I'm especially proud of this, is that I sit on the board of Hospital for Special Surgery, and this year, um, Penny's doctor is being honored at the November 8th annual pediatric fundraiser, and we are officially announcing the newly renamed Penny Durge Adaptive Academy at HSS. Wow. Which is That's, incredible. <laughs> this just yes. gets more impressive. Yes. I don't know what you can say next because I keep <laughs> wanting to say holy and then blank. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're going to get me in trouble on radio if you keep doing this. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. That it's really is. incredible. It's um, it, the academy allows patients um, from hospitals for special surgery as well as their families and anyone else who want to go to these adaptive programs. So whether it's water skiing, ballet, horseback riding, sailing, surfing. Any kid can do whatever activity they want. This has been so much fun. I hate to cut you off, but I know we're running out of time. Before we do, one more time, tell our audience that website where they can find out more and maybe join in, take part in one of the events, or make a donation. Thank you so much. If you log on to Penny's Flight Foundation, it's www.pennysflight.org. We want to thank our guest today. Kate Durge. She is the chief executive officer, as you might guess, of Penny's Flight Foundation. Kate, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you both so much. It's been a real honor and a pleasure. I'm Bill Horan. I'm here with Nassau Community College student Stacy Rain, and I thank you for listening to this week's edition of My Hometown. We'd like to get your feedback on My Hometown. 
Send your comments to whpc at ncc.edu. Nassau Community College, where success starts and continues. Till next time, this is Bill St. James. And remember, there's no town like your hometown.